listening to us. Chapter 7 Aaron's staff becomes a serpent. Then the Lord said to Moses, Pay close attention to this. I will make you seem like God to Pharaoh, and your brother Aaron will be your prophet. Tell Aaron everything I command you, and Aaron must command Pharaoh to let the people of Israel leave his country. But I will make Pharaoh's heart stubborn, so I can multiply my miraculous signs and wonders in the land of Egypt. Even then, Pharaoh will refuse to listen to you. So I will bring down my fist on Egypt. Then I will rescue my forces, my people, the Israelites, from the land of Egypt with great acts of judgment. When I raise my powerful hand and bring out the Israelites, the Egyptians will know that I am the Lord. So Moses and Aaron did just as the Lord had commanded them. Moses was 80 years old and Aaron was 83 when they made their demands to Pharaoh. Then the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, Pharaoh will demand, show me a miracle. When he does this, say to Aaron, Take your staff and throw it down in front of Pharaoh, and it will become a serpent. So Moses and Aaron went to Pharaoh and did what the Lord had commanded them. Aaron threw down his staff before Pharaoh and his officials, and it became a serpent. Then Pharaoh called in his own wise men and sorcerers, and these Egyptian magicians did the same thing with their magic. They threw down their staffs, which also became serpents. But then Aaron's staff swallowed up their staffs. Pharaoh's heart, however, remained hard. He still refused to listen just as the Lord had predicted. A plague of blood. Then the Lord said to Moses, Pharaoh's heart is stubborn and he still refuses to let the people go. So go to Pharaoh in the morning as he goes down to the river. Stand on the bank of the Nile and meet him there. Be sure to take along the staff that turned into a snake. Then announce to him, The Lord, the God of the Hebrews, has sent me to tell you, Let my people go so they can worship me in the wilderness. Until now, you have refused to listen to him. So this is what the Lord says. I will show you that I am the Lord. Look, I will strike the water of the Nile with the staff in my hand and the river will turn to blood. The fish in it will die and the river will stink. The Egyptians will not be able to drink any water from the Nile. Then the Lord said to Moses, Tell Aaron, Take your staff and raise your hand over the waters of Egypt, all its rivers, canals, ponds and all the reservoirs. Turn all the water to blood. Everywhere in Egypt the water will turn to blood, even the water stored in wooden bowls and stone pots. So Moses and Aaron did just as the Lord commanded them. As Pharaoh and all of his officials watched, 
Aaron raised his staff and struck the water of the Nile. Suddenly, the whole river turned to blood. The fish in the river died, and the water became so foul that the Egyptians couldn't drink it. There was blood everywhere throughout the land of Egypt. But again, the magicians of Egypt used their magic, and they too turned water into blood. So Pharaoh's heart remained hard. He refused to listen to Moses and Aaron, just as the Lord had predicted. Pharaoh returned to his palace and put the whole thing out of his mind. Then all the Egyptians dug along the riverbank to find drinking water, for they couldn't drink the water from the Nile. Seven days passed from the time the Lord struck the Nile. Chapter 8 A Plague of Frogs Then the Lord said to Moses, Go back to Pharaoh and announce to him, This is what the Lord says. Let my people go so they can worship me. If you refuse to let them go, I will send a plague of frogs across your entire land. The Nile River will swarm with frogs. They will come up out of the river and into your palace, even into your bedroom and into your bed. They will enter the houses of your officials and your people. They will even jump up into your ovens and your kneading bowls. Frogs will jump on you, your people and your officials. Then the Lord said to Moses, Tell Aaron, Raise the staff in your hand over all the rivers, canals and ponds of Egypt and bring up frogs over all the land. So Aaron raised his hand over the waters of Egypt and frogs came up and covered the whole land. But the magicians were able to do the same thing with their magic. They too caused frogs to come up on the land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh summoned Moses and Aaron and begged, Plead with the Lord to take the frogs away from me and my people. I will let your people go, so they can offer sacrifices to the Lord. You set the time, Moses replied. Tell me when you want me to pray for you, your officials and your people. Then you and your houses will be rid of the frogs. They will remain only in the Nile River. Do it tomorrow, Pharaoh said. All right, Moses replied. It will be as you have said. Then you will know that there is no one like the Lord our God. The frogs will leave you and your houses, your officials and your people. They will remain only in the Nile River. So Moses and Aaron left Pharaoh's palace and Moses cried out to the Lord about the frogs he had inflicted on Pharaoh. And the Lord did just what Moses had predicted. The frogs in the houses the courtyards and the fields all died. The Egyptians piled them into great heaps and a terrible stench filled the land. But when Pharaoh saw that relief had come, he became stubborn. He refused to listen to Moses and Aaron, just as the Lord had predicted. A plague of gnats. So the Lord 
said to Moses, Tell Aaron, Raise your staff and strike the ground. The dust will turn into swarms of gnats throughout the land of Egypt. So Moses and Aaron did just as the Lord had commanded them. When Aaron raised his hand and struck the ground with his staff, gnats infested the entire land, covering the Egyptians and their animals. All the dust in the land of Egypt turned into gnats. Pharaoh's magicians tried to do the same thing with their secret arts, but this time they failed, and the gnats covered everyone people and animals alike. This is the finger of God, the magicians exclaimed to Pharaoh. But Pharaoh's heart remained hard. He wouldn't listen to them, just as the Lord had predicted. A Plague of Flies Then the Lord told Moses, Get up early in the morning and stand in Pharaoh's way as he goes down to the river. Say to him, This is what the Lord says. Let my people go so they can worship me. If you refuse, then I will send a swarm of flies on you, your officials, your people and all the houses. The Egyptian homes will be filled with flies and the ground will be covered with them. But this time I will spare the region of Goshen, where my people live. No flies will be found there. Then you will know that I am the Lord and that I am present even in the heart of your land. I will make a clear distinction between my people and your people. This miraculous sign will happen tomorrow. And the Lord did just as he had said. A thick swarm of flies filled Pharaoh's palace and the houses of his officials. The whole land of Egypt was thrown into chaos by the flies. Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron. All right, go ahead and offer sacrifices to your God, he said. But do it here in this land. But Moses replied, that wouldn't be right. The Egyptians detest the sacrifices that we offer to the Lord our God. Look, if we offer our sacrifices here where the Egyptians can see us, they will stone us. We must take a three-day trip into the wilderness to offer sacrifices to the Lord our God, just as he has commanded us. All right, go ahead, Pharaoh replied. I will let you go into the wilderness to offer sacrifices to the Lord your God. But don't go too far away. Now hurry and pray for me. Moses answered, As soon as I leave you, I will pray to the Lord, and tomorrow the swarms of flies will disappear from you and your officials and all your people. But I am warning you, Pharaoh, don't lie to us again and refuse to let the people go to offer sacrifices to the Lord. So Moses left Pharaoh's palace and pleaded with the Lord to remove all the flies. And the Lord did as Moses asked and caused the swarms of flies to disappear from Pharaoh his officials and his people. Not a single fly remained. But Pharaoh again became stubborn 
and refused to let the people go.